Welcome to 100% LCFC TV. I'm here with, here with Alan. Hello, everybody. Hello, Phil. How are you? Um, I'm a wee bit croaky, as you might hear, yeah. at the minute. Yeah, we've had our last couple of weeks, uh, two or three weeks, we've been coughing and spluttering like a, you know, an, old, an old car, but we're, we're getting better slowly. It's now, are you talking about your throat, or are you talking about Leicester City's performances no, there, Alan? No, I'm talking about my, my general health. It's not been great the last few weeks. Do you know, as you get older, Phil, it takes a lot longer to shake it off. It does, it does. But let's hope, come Saturday... I get a bit of a tonic. Yeah, a bit of a tonic, which would be yeah. to see Leicester beat Aye, Crystal Palace. Absolutely, Chris. Uh, uh, so, Chris, I mean, Chris. You changed your name. No, Crystal Palace. Phil, yeah, Crystal Palace, tough one. I mean, yeah, a game I mean, that you probably looked at at the start of the season when you're thinking, yeah, there's three points there. But uh, since the new manager's gone in... Uh, and Pardew at Palace. Uh, yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's turned things around a bit. He's given them a bit of belief. Um, that will be a tough one. But it's a game that I still expect us to win. I think we'll have enough in reserve, enough players. Providing everybody's fit, Phil, we seem to be picking up the odd knock here and there. Cam has yeah. been out, Dean Hammond's been out. You know, we've changed the goalkeeper. Liam Moore came back in, got injured, and he's yeah. back out again. So, you know, that sort of stability and continuity within the side, it's been a difficult time for Nigel. I think we looked a little stronger in the second half against Man United when Cambiasso did come on. Um, yeah. He seemed to shore things up a little bit. Well, um, certainly so, yeah. We his experience him, came yeah, in there. We caused him more problems in the second half. We, we actually won the second half 1-0. No, that might be sound a bit daft to certain supporters, but no. believe me, you know, that's the way that, that, that things work when, you, when you're a footballer. Well, at least we went out and gave a good account of our second half. It could have been a 4 5 6 niller if you weren't careful. But um, I think, obviously, uh, Big Vassy's goal came a wee bit too late just to, you know, to inspire a fight back, as it were. Yeah, I mean, the first 20-odd minutes or so, we were watching it and thinking, well, this is a pretty dull game, but Leicester is still well in it. And then yeah. 15 minutes later, it was suddenly the, the, the might of Man U had sort of crushed us. Although, you know, it was an offside goal, it was a keeper fumble, and it was a Wes, an, another own goal from Wes. Well, you see, that's a, it. It just wasn't going our way. Absolutely, Phil. You know, the first the offside, dear, yeah. oh, dear, oh, dear. You get some bad decisions and you get some bad decisions. And this was worse than bad, this decision. But you have to put up with it. As you say, Wes, Wes his own goal could have flown, could have gone anywhere that ball. And uh, United were the better side in the first half. Uh, you have you have to admit that. But um, I still believe. I don't. I don't think Manchester United are a good team. They've got good players, very good players. But I don't think they're a great team. They didn't, at 3 0, I was, was starting to fear that it could go on to be, like say, a bit of a cricket score. So it was good at half time that I think Pearson made a change and then brought on Cambiasso and, and made a couple of further changes. And we looked a lot more solid in the second half. Again, nothing, we weren't yeah. creating many chances, yeah. but we, we looked like it, it sorted it out that second half. Well, aye, and I think I just come under a wee bit of uh, for criticism for not playing uh, Mark O'Brien for the start of the games because. Mark O'Brien was very bright against Arsene Villa, you know, the, the home game when he made, when he started, his, yeah. I think it was his first game he started, his first 90 minutes and he was outstanding, obviously against his old club, you're going to you're going to use that to your advantage but the lad is showing and I, it just surprises me a wee bit is he as effective away from home as he is at home you know, he's a slight lad he's not particularly defensive minded hmm. So I think that must have been in Nigel's mind when he was uh, when he was picking the team. But certainly against Crystal Palace this week, I expect them to be in. So the fans, we were asking about Albrighton straight after the Man U yeah. game on, on uh, the Facebook site. And loads of fans are saying, Albrighton must start. What's he done wrong? Why does he not get enough game time? Um, you know, it just he's, he doesn't appear to be one of Nigel Pearson's favourite players. But um, I don't you know, think he, he can play a role. I right, I don't think Nigel has favourites. No, no, I, I didn't mean it, it that like way. that. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was just sort of putting you right. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, no. He doesn't seem to be no. able to establish a, 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 a regular first team role at well, the moment, th which surprises yeah. lots of the fans. I well, think. I, it does frustrate the fans, and, and and me as well. I'm a fan as much as anything else, mm. as anyone else. Um, but you have to have faith in your manager. There's, there'll be reasons why he's not playing. The lad will accept those reasons, and when he gets his chance. He'll, he'll, he'll take it, and um, as I said, we've discussed Mark Albrighton for the past couple of minutes there, and I do think he will start against Crystal Palace. Mm. 
uh, on Saturday for. Marez potentially is back. He's, he's now uh, Algeria out, mm. out of the African Cup of Nations. So he may just be coming back. But I don't think he'd go into the starting side because I would have thought he'd be quite tired after, after his well, exertions Well, it all depends how they manage him. The, the club will manage him when he comes back and um, mm. there will be a bit of jet lag, etc. But he will have... They, they lost a few days ago, didn't they? Yes. In the semi-final, I think. All well, the Leicester were pretty pleased about that. Yeah, result. I think most of the fans were <laughs> pleased. Uh, yeah. Um, and again, the key certainly on my Facebook site, they were all loving the fact that um, Maris was coming on. Brilliant. Gives you another option. Yeah. I mean, Jeffrey Sloop has gone into that left side, Maris's side, and um, he's, he's, he's found, how, found out how to score a goal. Yeah. I mean, how long ago was it that people were saying, Jeffrey Sloop should be playing up front, Jeffrey Sloop should be playing at left back? It's all over the place. I remember everybody had an opinion on it. Yeah. Jeffrey Sloop's always been a left side midfield player for me. Yeah. A, wi- a, a winger, if you like. You know, the old style winger, taking people on, not going to ball past them. But he's now found a couple of goals. He's found a sp- found a little position on the edge of the box. Have you noticed both goals? Yeah, come yeah, from very similar in, positions. Prepared to have a go, which is always well, nice. Well, the thing say. about his fellas, is normally as a striker, when the ball's wide and you know it's coming into the box, you're normally running towards goal. And, and you're trying to get in front of your defender at the last minute. It's called a late, a late run. You know, you arrive at the near post uh, late and fast. But these days, do you remember the game against Cardiff? Yeah. Um, when we got beat one 0 at home, we absolutely hammered them. Yes. Yeah. And I said, somebody says, "What was the result?" And I said, "It was Craig Bellamy won Leicester City nil." That's right. Because yeah. he did that. He went in. Made his run in, dragged defenders towards their own goals, but then checked out again to, to an area between the penalty spot and the edge of the box and scored from there. Jeffrey Sloop's doing the same now. I wonder if Kevin Phillips has been at him. Well, I would think, yeah, I would think right? he probably is having Absolutely. an impact, isn't he? I so, mean, so Jeff's adding goals to his game now. Yeah. And, the, and he's grown up. He has. He's, 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 he's a man. He's probably been one of our best players this season, or I've most all, improved players at absolutely. least. Absolutely. I've way. also said that. Um, when he got that wake-up call at Wolves away, uh, when he got absolutely smashed by Ebanks, Blake. Yeah. Welcome to the championship, yeah. son. We lost him for about 20, 20 games, 25 games. Look at him now. He's a man yeah, now. He's recovered from that. Oh, he's a man. Now, I mean, Saturday against Palace, who, who would you put into goal, Alan? Ah, that's a dilemma. <laughs> eh? I don't want to put you on the spot with that well, one, but everybody was calling for Schwarzer, and after his performance away at Spurs in yeah. the Cup, we thought, let's get that experience in. That's well, going to help. Well, you can't really blame you know, him for what went on at Old Trafford, really. No, he, d- he did do one fumble. Well, yeah. You know, a, a critical time. Apart from that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I know, but... The, the fans, by the way... Goalkeeper's mistakes uh, are always highlighted, Philip. Yes, it? you only you have know. to make one, and that's but it. But the thing is, Ben Hamer's done nothing wrong. No, I, I think that's what you most know. fans would say. They'd have Hamer in or they'd have Schwartz in. I take it Casper's still... Casper, I think, we, we would not, have known... Still not if he was in fit, contention. He, we, we would have known. Yeah. Um, and young Adam Smith's come back from a loan period at Mansfield. He must be feeling great, that young lad, eh? Three goalkeepers... Of stature, three goalkeepers well, would, that you would take, wouldn't you? You'd like to think he was using it as a can great we, time to we learn. Can we all three of them? <laughs> yeah, can we, we might need to. <laughs> we might need to. But um, no, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Ben Hamer comes back. Mm-hmm. But I'm quite looking forward to seeing Schwarzer. Yeah, I don't. I, for me, either of them could play, and I'm sure yep. both would do a, a suitably good job for us. Absolutely. Both seem good shot stoppers, and they both command the box well. Yes. I think just yes. Hamer did get pulled up again, and his I last think game his against Stoke, his distribution was really. Yeah. I think he was trying to move it fast and, and cause things, but it, I it think looked like he was overcooking it. Yeah, but I think also you're comparing them to to Casper. Casper's got dis- great distribution. Yeah. Is first class one of his strengths. So. You know, it might be a wee bit unkind to, to make comparisons. Yeah, no, that's absolutely it. Palace, Palace are going to come. They've got a good attacking lineup. They've just they signed Zahar as well. They have. Uh, as on a permanent deal in the transfer window. Do you so know how much per minute he costs Manchester United? No, go on. You know, he's signing on fee, signing yeah. fee and stuff. And the number of games that he played, if you, if you knock it down to minutes, £400,000 a minute. It's not bad if you can earn it. It's not too bad. I don't shabby. <laughs> I don't, you I weren't quite on that way, Alan, back yeah, in the day. <laughs> I can maybe get a wee flat with that somewhere. Yeah. So four hundred thousand pounds. Wow. But, but like you say, Palace under Pardew have been. Um, they've sort of they've they've been revitalised a little bit. Yeah. And uh, that yeah. won't be an easy one. I mean, lots no of no pushover. Lots of the fans were calling it a six-pointer. It really is one of those where, and nice. I know people say every game's important. I know. But 
if we win, we get three points. They get zero. It, it yeah. just if they if they were to get a point or even three, it has a massive. It's, I think it's a pivotal game. I understand. Game. I understand when, when when the supporters talk about a six point and stuff like that. I tend not to use that. You can only get three points. Yes. All you can do is do your best, get three points. You don't want to get to the stage where you're relying on other teams. Uh, yeah. and, and other teams' results. You've got to do it for yourself. Crystal Palace is one coming. Now, you look at the run that we've got coming up now. We've got Everton away. We've got Aston Villa away in the Cup. We've got um, Arsenal away. We've got Chelsea at home. Wow, come on. It's going to be mean, good fun. You don't, aye. It's going to be good me, fun. If you don't want to play in the, them games and you're not banging the managers, ripping it off the manager's door off its hinges to say, come on, boss, play me. I'm ready for this. Then you shouldn't be on the pitch. You know, it's a, the Marvellous games. And I think games that we can get something out of. I really do. I don't think this league is as strong as people make it out to be, apart from maybe your Chelsea, your Manchester City, maybe Arsenal to a certain extent. But apart from that, I don't think there's a great deal. We seem to be hanging on in there. On Saturday when we lost at Man U, uh, the bottom six all lost as well. So we didn't lose any ground, which was great news. For yeah. one of those weeks, we're yeah. only lots of fans. We've got some fans saying, "Oh, it's all doom and gloom," and here, here comes the championship. Got yeah. lots of other fans saying, "No, come on, let's be real. We're three points off Absolutely. safety." And yeah. if you ask me, if if we could get to within the last game or two, where we're still, if we were still in that position, where we can still win one of the last games and then have a chance, you probably think, probably take that. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know that we've got a chance with the last few games to go. So I think, I think we're not out of it. Sorry, for, I think what you're talking about there is the, the, the term is mathematically impossible. Yes. That's the one that starts rearing its ugly head around about April time. And But, you know, until it is mathematically impossible for us to stay up, you've got something to fight for. But you should be fighting every game. There will be. the last, I have no doubt about the character of the dressing room at the moment and of the people in charge. And then... You have to trust them. Everybody has their favourites, everybody has their opinions, and that's fine, that's great. But when all said and done, it's, what's going to be is going to be. We can influence it as, as, as supporters by getting behind the players and getting behind the team. Um, and, and, and by all accounts, but, you know, have your opinion, but try and measure it, try and, try and think outside the box a wee bit. And, you know, be a bit measured in, 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 in your opinions and stuff like that. But I'll be there on Saturday, as I, as I always am. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to a good performance. The lads are looking forward to putting this result behind them and getting on with the job. Very much so. I wonder if it'll be a nervy game. It certainly will be a nervy uh, performance, I think, from the fans. I think there'll be a lot of people going, but they've got to just let that go and, and get back in the team from the first minute. Well, it's amazing how it transfers, Phil, you know, from the terraces to the pitch. Mm. You know, you hear the, you hear the sort of, oh, you know. Yeah. You can hear the tension, can you? And, then, yeah. and then you hear the excitement, and then you see the players. The ball can sometimes be like a hot potato, but... You've got to be brave in circumstances like that. You've got to have a determination and you've got to be able to accept the ball in, in, in difficult situations and deal with it. You know, there's, there's this, uh, this uh, terminology again that comes into the game about players hiding. And certain players do, certain players don't. I don't think any of us hide. I think no, they, I think, I, I think I, they go for everything. I agree. I think the Leicester players, they all, they all seem to get stuck in all the way through and they're, yeah. they're giving it all. Um, and they'll continue to do so. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, so we're both going to Saturday's game against Palace yes. thinking that it, it is quite a tight, it's going to be a tight game. Yes. But we're both confident of a City win. Absolutely. Absolutely confident, um, as I am most weeks. You know, you, as a player, I never went out to lose. No. Um, I never, until it was like the referee blew his final whistle and he scored more goals than us. We are lost. Yeah. But until... Uh, until they were mathematically impossible. <laughs> I think that. Keep going. Ah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Keep going. Keep keep, keep the supporters. Keep, keep the supporters. I'll bang it out as many times as I possibly can. You just tell them. Tell them, Alan. You just don't know how important your job is in all of this. Yeah. You really don't. You, I've watched you now as much as a team for for four or five seasons, in one capacity or another, but um, you really don't. On the pitch, when I was playing, I could hear the supporters. And it gave you a lift, it gave you a boost. When you heard your name being sung through the terraces, when your football club's name to be 
smashed out every 10 minutes. Honestly, this team and this club, they need you and they need you to stand firm with one another and take what may, which will be safety. So you've heard it there from Mr Young. He's been there, he's stood out on that pitch. He's heard the Leicester fans cheer him on. He knows what a difference we can make. So that's it from 100% LCFC TV from myself. Well, not quite. No, why? Uh, it's just um, at least we don't have to walk, go and watch um, Coventry. Oh, well, yeah, we've got some Coventry and, and Forest uh, fans. And, and Nottingham Forest, there are two guys sat behind me here having a little glass of wine. One's Roger the Red, and the other one's... Uh, was it True Blue or something yeah, like that? Chris the Cov fan or something. Chris the yeah. Cov fan or something. We just have a wee chat with them. Luckily, we can still uh, at we least can be very m- smug and laugh at them. Have to say it quietly. <laughs> yeah. Shh. They're going to bash us with their glass <laughs> of wine or something. <laughs> so, yeah, from myself, Phil Holloway, here at 100% LCFC TV, and from Mr. Alan Young. See you again soon. We'll see you Saturday.